Okay, well, here we go. Welcome, everyone, to our the second evening of our 10th annual Dis, uh, Discover Japan lecture series. Uh, presentations by our Mukagawa Extension students on topics of history, Japanese history, culture, and society. We're glad you're here. Many of you were here last night. Some of you are new. I hope you got a program. Uh, first of all, very important, we'd like you to turn off your cell phones because our students don't want to be distracted by cell phones, of course. Anyway, we are so excited. Uh, the students, as Jill said last night, this is their second semester back to Spokane. They came in February of this year. They were here for 14 weeks studying in the regular program. And about 25 of them decided to come back for an extension program, which is more advanced classes and um, more difficult curriculum. And one of the major parts of the curriculum is for them to, to prepare these presentations. Prior to that, they, they prepare research papers. But they actually start this whole process in April. Because when we meet them in April, we begin to talk to them about topics for tonight. And uh, so they started thinking, brainstorming, coming up with their topics before they left in May back to Japan. Throughout the summer, they prepared their topics more and did more research. Then they came back and they, they finalized their research papers and they've been practicing very hard. So we're very proud of them. Last night was just fabulous. And tonight we have three more very interesting topics. And... Uh, I'd like to thank Mark Danner for all of his work, and we have uh, other people that have helped so much. Uh, Mr. Ando from the Japanese Cultural Center, he's a great supporter. So, without further ado, I think we're ready for our first topic, which is Stunning Ancient City Kamakura. Let's welcome them. Hi everyone, my name is Riko. And my name is Natsumi. Thank you, for thank you for coming today. I'm glad to be here with you. Today, we are talking about Kamakura. <laughs> it doesn't work. <laughs> I have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know Kamakura? Yes, I know. <laughs> it is an ancient city in Japan that is located in Kanagawa Prefecture, about 80 miles south of Tokyo. Also, Kamakura is a famous period. It's called Kamakura period. A lot of sightseers visit, visit Kamakura every year. On September 22, 2011, the Japanese government decided to, decided to recommend Kamakura as a World Heritage Site to UNESCO with Mount Fuji. The Japanese government is aiming for the registration of World Heritage status in 2013. Today, we are talking about two features of Kamakura. First, I'm talking about the significant history during the Kamakura period. Next, I will introduce the magnificent great image of Buddha. First, we will present the history of Kamakura. Please enjoy her presentation. There is a famous period. It's called Kamakura period. It dates from 1192 to 1333. I'm introduced about the three features of Kamakura period. First, samurai and bushi. Second, the first shogun, Yoritomo Minamoto. Third, the battle of Genko. One of the reasons why Kamakura is so famous is that it was the capital of Japan from 
1192-1333 The capital moved from Kyoto to Kamakura. The meaning of shogun is a person who had a military leadership. The shogun is the head of samurai and bushi. This is the kanji of samurai and bushi. This is the kanji of samurai. The left part meaning is person. The right part meaning to serve the shogun. This is the kanji of bushi. Bu means the martial art. She means men and samurai. These words created by different kanjis, but they indicate the same person who supports shogun. The word, the word of samurai is more popular than bushi. Bushi is another more academic word for samurai. Also, it is possible to say the word of samurai is a symbol of Japan. Because when you hear the word of samurai, you can have images easily about Japan. The Samurai Japan is a national men's baseball team name. The name of Samurai Japan is created in World Baseball Classic in 2006. As you know, Ichiro Suzuki, who belongs in Seattle Mariners, played as a member of Samurai Japan. During the Kamakura period, samurai and bushi need skills of using weapons in order to win battles. The land ownership is very important for people. In order to expand their land, they battled with enemies who lived in different places. A bow, a bow and arrow and Japanese sword were main weapons, especially at the Kamakura period. As you can see, we are wearing this costume. <laughs> also, I can show you the Japanese sword. <laughs> Enemy is coming! It's so good, isn't it? <laughs> I borrowed this sword from Mr. Sinclair. Could you stand up, Mr. Sinclair? I would like to thank you. Next, I introduce the first shogun, Yoritomo Minamoto. This is the Yoritomo Minamoto. I already told you about the capital of Kamakura. It moved because of Yoritomo. He took over the leadership from the emperor as the first shogun. Also, he eloped a woman whose name is Masako Hojo. She is also famous throughout the history. This couple is the most popular couple in Japanese history. Why can I say like this? Because after Yoritomo died, Masako supported this period and government. There is a famous speech by Masako Hojo. She said she told her followers the obligations to Mr. Yoritomo are higher than mountain and deeper than oceans. This speech impressed her followers, so she was like a female shogun at the Kamakura period. Also, Masako has a kind of funny and scary legend. She, Masako loves Yoritomo so much that there is a problem. Yoritomo is a womanizer. <laughs> Although they eloped, Yoritomo has a mistress. Of course, Masako didn't accept it, accept his behavior. behavior his action made her very, very, very angry. Finally, Masako set fire to the mistress's house because she was jealous. To make a woman mad is the most horrible thing in the world throughout the history and the future. Do you agree with me? <laughs> 
Next, let me explain the battle of Genko. This is the most deeply impressive thing for me during the Kamakura period. This is the name of battle for twice with Mongolians. It is first time for Japanese people to battle with foreigner on Japanese land. The Mongolians tried to invade Japan. The first battle happened in 1274. Another battle happened in 1281. About five times as many as people attacked the Kyushu area that is located in southwest of Japan. Japanese were suffering at the, at the hands of Mongolian army that Genghis Khan led. However, both of these battles suddenly experienced a big rainstorm. Jap uh, the Mongolian army was almost destroyed by the power of weather. Japanese thought this victory was brought by God. The weather became their ally. The Japanese called Japanese was called the rainstorm from God, Kamikaze. These kanji means God and wind. This word can translate to English. It is divine wind. Divine wind was also happened in 1944. As you know, 1944 is the end of World War II. 4,516 fighters died as members of Divine Wind. The Divine Wind was a special group of young men, only 17 to 20 years old. They boarded their planes and attacked with bombs and tried to save Japan from the crisis. It was the same as Genko situation. In order to reverse this bad situation, the Japanese government decided to make the divine wind. They wished a miracle like Genko situation. The wish was included the name of Kamikaze. The divine wind was named Kamikaze in Japanese. This is from the Battle of Genko during the Kamakura period. In conclusion, the, Jap the Kamakura period brought a revolutionary change to Japanese history. It is not only history, but also it had still invisible, but influence in our daily life. It is the Kamakura period. Thank you for listening. for sharing with us about the history of Kamakura. Next, I will introduce Great Image of Buddha. As Riko explained, Kamakura is a historical city, so there are a lot of famous places in Kamakura. However, the most famous place in Kamakura is Kotokuin Temple. Kotokuin Temple is located in Hase Town in Kamakura City. Why do you think Kotokuin Temple is the most famous place in Kamakura? The answer is, there is a magnificent great image of Buddha. It's so big and beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> the great image of Buddha is called Daibutsu. This is the kanji of Daibutsu. Dai means big and Butsu means Buddha. From now on, let me call the statue Daibutsu. This Daibutsu is a national treasure in Japan. There are three interesting points of Daibutsu. First, its mysterious history. Second, its astonishing symbols. And third, one fascinating feature of the Kotokuin Temple. First, please let me talk about the mystery, mysterious history. This Daibutsu was proposed by Yoritomo Minamoto, who was the first shogun of Kamakura period. The reason he proposed it was when he visited Nara, 
which was the capital city of Japan in 8th period, and so big daibutsu, he was so moved and impressed. So he decided to make daibutsu in Kamakura too. However, his dream didn't come true while he was alive. But Joko, who is a Buddhist priest, and Tsubone in Adano, who is a female servant of Yoritomo, agreed to make this daibutsu. So this plan to make daibutsu continued and finally it was completed in 1243. Unfortunately, this daibutsu was damaged because of big storm in 1248. Also, the hall of daibutsu, which is called daibutsu den in Japanese, and also house of daibutsu, was also damaged. Fortunately, both of them are rebuilt in 1252. Before, the daibutsu was made of wood, but after a storm, this daibutsu was made of bronze because Joko, who is a Buddhist priest, suggested to make daibutsu of bronze so it would be never damaged again. This image cast by Ono Goroemon and Tanji Hisatomo. Unhappily, tsunamis came in 1334 and 1369. Japan has a lot of tsunamis. As you know, Tohoku tsunami came in this year. This is a picture of the hall of Daibutsu. It looks big and very beautiful. Also, it looks very strong. However, finally, the hall, only the hall of Daibutsu was destroyed because of tsunamis. After tsunamis, the whole of Daibutsu was never rebuilt again, and since then, this Daibutsu has been standing in the open air. Next, I will talk about astonishing symbols. This, each part of Daibutsu has a meaning, so I will explain some important part of Daibutsu. This is Rahotsu. It is the hair of Daibutsu. It means spiral-shaped color. This rahotsu represents sensibility and eminence. There are 656 rahotsu, and each rahotsu is 10 inches high. They are curled counterclockwise. Next, this is Byakugo. It is a round bump, and it is located between his eyebrows. The light is shining on the people of the world from this Byakugo. This is his ear. This ear are very big and plump, and ear and earlobe have open holes. This ear represents its ability to hear in the world. It sounds interesting, doesn't it? This is his hand. This shape shows a type of Buddhism, which is Amida Nyorai. This shape put together with four finger, middle finger, and ring finger, like this. Let's make together like this. Thank you very much. <laughs> Next, I'd like to compare Daibutsu with one of the famous landmarks, the Statue of Liberty. The Daibutsu is 46. 7.7 .7 feet high, and it's impossible, but if Daibutsu were stand up, it's 84 feet high. <laughs> <laughs> On the other hand, the Statue of Liberty is 100 feet, 160 feet high. The weight of Daibutsu is 280,000 pounds, and the Statue of Liberty's weight is 490,000 pounds. So you can notice immediately that the Statue of Liberty is bigger than the Daibutsu. However, when comparing of history, the Daibutsu is older than the Statue of Liberty. The Statue of Liberty is 120 years old, but the Daibutsu is 740 years old. So Daibutsu has longer history. The similar things between the Daibutsu and the Statue of Liberty is 
Both of them are symbols of each place. As you know, the Statue of Liberty is a symbol of New York. But the Daibutsu is also a symbol of Kamakura City. Finally, I will talk about one fascinating feature of the Daibutsu. Sorry, excuse me, Kotokuin Temple. The Kotokuin Temple has some interesting objects which are related to the Daibutsu. But the most important object is this Faraji, which means the pair of straw sandals. This Faraji is 7 feet long, and this is the feet, fitted feet of the Daibutsu. So this Daibutsu were donated, donated for Daibutsu of the community of children in Ibaraki Prefecture in 1951. At that time, Japan was still damaged from World War II, so they were donated with the wish that the Daibutsu would wear this Faraji to walk around Japan to bring happiness to all of people. Because of this story, this Waraji is the most important object in Kotokuin Temple. In conclusion, the Daibutsu has inscrutable history. Yoritomo decided to make Daibutsu and it was made of wood, but there was a storm and tsunamis, so they were damaged. But fortunately, it was made of bronze, and today's damage, today's Daibutsu is not so different from first Daibutsu. It is related to the Amida Nurai Buddhism, and each part of Daibutsu has legendary meanings. Today, this Daibutsu is a symbol of Kamakura. It is not the biggest and oldest Daibutsu in Japan, but it is admirable statues. So, there are a lot of, a lot of tourists visit in there. So, Many people are proud of it. As we explained now, as we explained now, Kamakura is a historic spot and very popular for sightseeing. If you have a chance to come go to Japan, please think of visiting Kamakura because Kamakura has many beautiful places other than what we explained now. We are sure you will be attracted by Japanese culture and old city. Are you interested in Kamakura? Yes. Yeah. Thank you for listening. Kamakura, Daibutsu is waiting for you. <laughs> Does anyone have any questions? Yes, yes ma'am. Ma <laughs> um, I noticed on the picture of the samurai very early in your presentation that um, he was barefoot, and I think you guys are barefoot. <laughs> did, uh, did they actually like fight battles and things without any shoes on? The question is, uh, did when, when they when they battled with enemies, they wear shoes or not? <laughs> <laughs> you might you might guess they put on the shoes <laughs> because it's so dangerous <laughs> in on battles. So we put on the shoes, so very strong shoes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Does anyone have any question? Yes, yes sir. Uh, The question is the tsunami is Japanese word. Uh, is tsunami Japanese word? It, it is also a Japanese word. Yeah, it is Japanese word. But recently, tsunami word is also English word. What does it mean in Japanese? What does it mean in Japanese? The question is what does it mean, tsunami? 
tsunami means the big wave come to come to any place after earthquake. <laughs> Is it a good answer for you? <laughs> it doesn't make sense. <laughs> Does anyone have any question? Yes. Um, yes, ma'am. Have either of you been to Kansa and seen the uh, Yes. The question. <laughs> Sorry. The question okay. is: Have you ever have been? Uh, have, have we, have we have ever we? been to Kamakura <laughs> and watched the great of, image of Buddha? Yes. I have. <laughs> yeah. Good. Okay. Thank you very much. Good job, Rico and.